Hello my friends, I think that you have already heard about the drone that hit one of the buildings in the Russian capital city of Moscow and to be more precise in Kremlin. And the building over there carries the main flag of the Russian Federation. Before there was the Soviet flag and it was changed for the Russian flag after Soviet Union collapse and that moment was quite iconic for Russia and for the Soviet Union. It was live broadcasted marking the new page in the history of the ex-Soviet countries. Unfortunately Russia failed to develop in the democratic state and they continue to bring suffering for their neighbors like Ukraine. So this attack was really symbolic and we have two of the sides that could have conducted this attack, Ukraine or Russia itself. So today we're gonna review both of those variants, Russian false flag operation or Ukrainian attack far behind the front lines to mark the weakness of the Russian Federation. And this is the video itself, I'll partially show it to you so you can see the red square and the building, one of the main buildings of the Kremlin. You can see how Russia is getting ready for the victory parade celebration as usual. So there was the drone that flown just over this flag on top and just kaboom! big boom and it should have I think eliminated the flag but the breeze felt on the roof and the roof got some sort of the fire and damages. The Russian propaganda claimed at first that they've shut down the drone just over that building but no it was the programmed explosion over that building. So no casualties were reported, no big damage to the building I would say but the huge reputation damage to the Russian Federation itself and the Russian media says that it was the assassination attempt on Putin. My friends, before we continue, let me tell you about the partner and the sponsor of my channel, the Atlas VPN. They came out with a huge deal where you can have the Atlas VPN premium for just 170 a month with a six months for free and totally it will give you 85% of discount. It is exclusively available only for my followers, the subscribers and viewers of my channel. And I can confirm that the Atlas VPN is the best VPN out there. Also, Atlas VPN uses the military standard protocols to secure your data and they put firewalls to the government control, annoying ads and hackers. Then I have some free time, I would like to watch my favorite series on the Netflix platform. So not only Atlas VPN gives me the permission to access any kind of series in my country which are blocked or not blocked, but it gives me fantastic streaming speed. Basically, there are no any changes in that parameter whether Atlas VPN on or off. My friends, it was a game changer for me because before I tried many VPNs and this one is the fastest. And to get this awesome deal, please follow my personal link in the video description just below where you can get the Atlas VPN for 170 per month with a 6 months for free. It is outstanding awesome especially for my subscribers and followers the deal is time limited so hurry up to join the club and we have the other video confirming that there were two of the drones out there but it was not just the kremlin that have received the drone strike today there is the oil storage facility on the russian federation very close to the kirch bridge i think they have even more oil reservoirs compared to the russian marine base in sebastopol that was attacked also recently it's been confirmed that two reservoirs sustained some of the damages and fire started this morning and here we have the video of the cctv camera we have one explosion on the left over here probably drone was equipped with some sort of the rockets and we have the explosion after a while here near to reservoir and that caused the fire so maybe it wasn't even the kamikaze drone but the drone that is similar to the biractar just the smaller version and here as you can see the cctv camera installed on the pipelines and those pipelines were totally demolished then the sevastopol oil storage was attacked it is very easy to locate the oil storage it's on the russian side but not far away from the kirch bridge as you can see it's very huge and russians are building the new power of the storage so it's enormous this is not just the simple oil storage russians use it to convert the heavy oil into the oil that they can use for the ships 
and from the picture we may say that this part go damages so here we see the pipelines and cctv cameras somewhere over here and they also have many reservoirs on the south over here plus we got the confirmation that the last night the bransk airfield was attacked by some of the drones this is the military airfield as usual the russian propaganda says that they've shut down the drones and just debris caused the damages on the airfield destroying one of the antonov 124 it's the big military airplane that russia uses for the transportation unfortunately no videos or photos were provided from the scene but it was confirmed by russia Russians officially. So as you can see, it's the very hard day for the air defense of the Russian Federation. And let's go back to the Kremlin case. I promised to you to discuss two of the versions. By the way, this is the building itself. It's the Congress House of Russia, where Putin has his own apartments, but he rarely visits the place. Usually he stays outside the Moscow. But this place is famous for lots of the official cases. For example, in this hall, Putin greeted the new self-proclaimed republics to join the Russian Federation, not even taking the control over those parts of Ukraine. And the roof with the flag is just on the top, it's like the ceiling of this hall. So the first version is that Ukraine is responsible for this one. And yes, I'll speculate about this one based on the information that we have so far. As I showed you before, there were numerous of the attacks on the Russian Federation territory last night. So it could be also the part of that organized attack. And it wasn't the attempt to eliminate the Putin, no. But it was the successful mission to cause the Russian reputation losses because Kremlin have never been under the air attacks since the World War II and from what I was able to find on the internet, even during the Second World War there were no bombs dropped on the Kremlin. Plus, the Russian Federation haven't announced the attack on the Kremlin for a very long time. Today, after afternoon, they confirmed that after the information leaked into the press, the information from the CCTV cameras. Even though some of the Moscow citizens have reported this accident in their social media groups, the official government haven't reacted until everybody saw the videos. So indeed, the Russian government tried not to spread this information at first. Also, the plus for the Ukrainian responsibility goes personally to President Zelensky because today he left Ukraine. He went to Finland where he met with other leaders of the northern countries. And tomorrow he's going to Netherlands. So Russia is unable to respond in the same way because the main guy, the leader, left the country for a while. So if Russia launches the rockets or the drones on the president's office in Kiev, they'll just uh, damage the building, that's it. It will not be the same scale of the reputation loss. Everybody understand that it will be the fake reaction. But again, Ukraine has the very powerful air defense over the Kiev city. And Russia has quite low chances to target the president administration in Kiev, but they may try to escalate. One more plus to that version that Ukrainian-made drones were already spotted in Moscow area. I have already filmed the video about it so for sure those were ukrainian made drones that lost the control or something or collided to the trees and russians were able to take the pictures so it's been confirmed so after the first attack there were some of the people who were climbing the tower in attempt to identify the direction of the second drone and it's very hard to say what drone there was, but it's not the Shahid. It clearly has the wings and the fuselage as the normal airplane. And it is not the Lancet drone either. So definitely why should they climb the tower if that attack was organized by the Russian Federation? Because they were quite lucky not to be at the place at the drone attack. Also, the time gap between the drone strikes is around 15 minutes. That shows that probably those drones were launched from the long distance. So the general idea why Ukraine might have conducted this strike is to show our allies that Russia doesn't care any longer about their red lines that they stated before 
Remember how they say that the red line is to supply the Heimers to Ukraine, the red line is to supply the tanks for Ukraine, the red line is to attack Crimea, the red line and now the line is just over here in Kremlin. It means that Ukraine may get all of the required weaponry including the sophisticated fighter jets and there will be no any circumstances for the Allies because Russia is weak. They don't care about their red lines any longer. They're afraid to respond or they have nothing to respond and even Russians themselves, they call this one as the brown line themselves. Joking in the social media and begging Russia for the firm response to Ukraine. But definitely with what they can respond. More rockets? Well, we have the air defense and they already fire the rockets to Ukrainian cities. They will send more army to Ukraine, they will attack Kyiv. It will be the same as it was one year ago. And they have already brought everything they have into Ukrainian territory. And as I say to you, the attack on the president's office in Kyiv will not bring any benefits for Russia. So as I see it, there are two ways for Russia. The first one is very stupid to use nukes. The second one is also stupid, but nevertheless, it could be they may declare the war officially against Ukraine and announce the massive mobilization of the Russian men. And both of those variants are terrible for Putin's regime. But we have also the big minus in the version that Ukraine conducted this attack, because officially President Zelensky declared that Ukraine is not responsible for this. And some of the Ukrainian politicians say that there is the Russian opposition or Russian elite that is against the Putin's regime. They've bought the drones to conduct this assault, let's say. Other than that, I don't see any kind of the minuses for the version that Ukraine conducted this attack. I know that we were preparing for some sort of the surprise for the Russian Federation on 9th of May. And you know probably that there was the competition announced by one of our bank directors with a price of half a million dollars for those designers who will design the drone that will go to the Red Square and probably they are trying to do it. So I would say that Ukraine has pursuit and inspiration to perform this kind of the strikes. All right, and now the version with the false flag operation. In that case, Putin wants to rise the stakes in that war to usage of the nukes or something like that. He wants to show to the Western countries that Ukraine conducted the attacks even on Kremlin without any negotiations with the partners. And just before the counterattack, it could be the sign for our allies do not support Ukraine with your weaponry. Otherwise, Russia may create the artificial situation in which they will respond using nukes. It doesn't mean that they will use them, they're still afraid to do it, but the idea now is to show the Western world that they are ready. And also this version has its own roots in the history, then Putin got the power. So right before elections there were several buildings blown up inside the Russian Federation and in Moscow itself. And later on the FSB agents were caught in Rizan by police. And those FSB agents had explosives with them. Later on police freed those agents saying that it was just the exercise. But clearly that story showed that Putin together with FSB blown up the buildings in Russia just to increase the rating of Putin. It was done to show the Chechen people as their main enemy, the enemy of the Russian people. And after a while Putin won the elections and he began one more war against Chechnya, which he obviously won, but it would not be possible without coordination with Kadyrov's clan in Chechnya. So definitely there is the variant that Russia may restart this false flag operation once again to show the Russian society their enemy as Ukrainians. And finally announce the massive mobilization in their society and in that way they may secure the occupied territories in Ukraine. But also as I say to you, Russia tried to hide this event from the public for a long time actually. And also Russia now is out of the main options to respond as I told you. So what they have right now is the big shame after this attack. So to summarize, it could be everything, but I guess if we'll not see nukes uh, firing in the nearby future, if we'll not see the massive new mobilization inside the Russian Federation in the nearby future, it was the Ukrainian attack on the Kremlin. But if we'll see all of that stuff, it 
it was the Russian false flag operation. At least it's my own opinion, you may agree with me or disagree, you may write your own in the comment section just below. Today the Speaker of the Russian Parliament Volodin said that they will demand the use of weapons capable of stopping and destroying the Kyiv regime. Demand from whom? From military? From Putin? And we have the new memes of Putin on 9th of May. He simply cannot cancel that event, otherwise he will show that he is a very weak person. So I expect extraordinary measures during that parade, but nevertheless, as you can see, drones may reach the Red Square. And this afternoon one more drone was spotted in Moscow, but maybe it's just the part of something, maybe the small balloon was floating in the skies, sometimes it may happen, because I see the silhouette of unknown flying object. <laughs> and the Russian ex-president Medvedev, who is a little drunk today, I think, asked to eliminate President Zelensky physically. Well, no one cares actually what he says, but you can see what alcohol may cause to the brain. By the way, the fire in Taman continued for the whole day, and I guess if they were able to eliminate it till the evening time. The new additional military aid for Ukraine was announced today by the United States, so here we go with artillery shells and artilleries themselves, tow missiles and other equipment that will be used for the counterattack. Obviously, this equipment will go to Ukraine in a few weeks and we may start the counterattack even without it. But there is also the possibility that Ukraine may postpone the counterattack after having all of that weaponry required. And unfortunately, we have some of the tragic news coming from the Kherson. As you know, Russia left that city and after they left it, they start to attack it using the S-300 modified rockets, artillery systems and others. So today they fired towards the store, it was the big one, the epicenter, and there were around 20 casualties. So this is the response that Russia may do. They're just cowards firing their rockets to civilian infrastructure. Today many of the Russian resources reported that the counterattack was started by the Ukrainian army near to Arihiv towards the south. The Russian soldiers even filmed some sort of the video of explosions and traces on the south. But actually it wasn't the massive Ukrainian counterattack. We used some sort of the small tactical groups to identify the positions of the Russian artillery and the other enemy units. It is the part of the phase one of the counterattack. It may continue for a few weeks before we understand the situation on the Russian side. And then we'll move with all of our forces. After the Kremlin attack, the United States Embassy in Ukraine issued the high alert of the missile attack that could be conducted on Kyiv and Kyiv Oblast in the near future. Alright, and let's go for the military map update. We have some of the changes, just the minor changes near to Avdiivka. So yesterday it was the counterattack of Ukrainian forces over here, but Russia also gained their positions. So it was yesterday and it is today. So Russia took this field and they've lost this field. Let's go for the Bakhmut. So there is also the minor change for today. Russia took those three buildings before Ukraine conducted the successful counterattack in this place, pushing Russians away. But today Russia got the territory back. By the way, today Prigozhin announced that Ukraine have started the counterattack. The Ukrainian army has no limits in using the shells. He said that Wagner army has the shells for a few days. And also he said that the Russian defense ministry is not responding to their requests. There was also the report from the Russian military bloggers that Ukrainian army got the Russian army encircled near to Bilohorovka. The situation there, they said, very hard, but on the military map I don't see any kind of the updates. It's better to take that information in account, but not to trust it. And today finally we got the clarification of who is controlling which island near to Kherson. So today we can see the picture that Ukraine controls uh, this part and Russia controls uh, that part and some islands are in a grey area. It means that probably there is some fighting ongoing between the sides and Russia have used the aviation bombs in that region. And the grey area also extends on the other part of the Dnieper river as you can see. Well, I just hope 
hope that we'll see more positive updates in the future. My friends, now please press the like to this video and don't forget to check my personal link in the video description where you can get the Atlas VPN Premium for just 170 per month with the 6 months for free. This deal was specially created for my subscribers and followers and it is time limited. So hurry up to join the club. My friends, I wish you all a peaceful sky wherever you are and have a great time.